Hi, this is Rich from Bitch and Seat Company, and today's video is on our Cafe Racer kit for the V-Rod Muscle. Uh, this kit is really designed for people over the six foot mark to get them back in the saddle. This particular customer with his 2015 V-Rod Muscle is six foot five, about 225 pounds. And this is where we're gonna really make this bike work for him. You're gonna see some photos of the bike when he was riding it out of his um, out of the dealership where he picked it up and you'll be able to see that he looks like he's a big kid on a little kid's bike wait till you see this thing check it out we're gonna put our cafe racer kit on this bike and as you can see all the parts in front this is what we're installing today okay the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tear down the stock seat remove the stock rear fender and tail light system and then prepare everything to install our cafe fender kit. we're gonna go ahead and disassembled seat, pull the lanyard off, spin the clip around, push down on it. Ah, it's not that easy sometimes. Oh, grab a screwdriver, flip that barrel over, just shove down like that. Clip it out from the back side, if you're lucky. Ah, oh, damn thing, there we go. It's because we're on video. All right, not that big a deal, it's off. I pre-loosened these. They're supposed to be tight, obviously. Both installation nuts off. Seat pops off this way. Save your parts. Now all this stuff it has to come out of the way and unclip so I have it all, again all it's all pre um, disconnected so it's easier for me to show the disassembly unplug all this stuff get it out of your way these are metric I think these are 13 millimeter again they're loose now all of these items have to be re-loctited Make sure you clean the Loctite off the threads before you reinstall. Wire wheel is the way to go. Same with the shock bolts when we get to that point. Rear fender comes right off. Real simple. Now that the uh, fender is off, it's going to be easier to remove the stock license plate assembly. So again, I have all this pre-loosened, these two button heads come out of there. All of this was clipped into these uh, wire zip, lock, zip ties. So that comes off, we're going to replace it with a, a new one. We'll talk about that in a few minutes when we're getting ready to assemble. Okay, now that we have the rear fender and license plate off of the bike, we're going to go ahead and install the wheel. I pre-equipped this wheel with a Metzler. 260 40 series tire just to get a little more width out of the tire and uh, fill up the gap in between our cafe fender okay now we're going to remove the loctite off of these um, bolts these bolts are for the uh, uh, replacement shocks the work shocks that we're going to install so always get the loctite off before you put new loctite on you'll cause problems and that's the way to do it Okay, today we're going to install these custom built works shocks. I um, had works build these specifically to lower the bike one inch. They make shocks, several companies make shocks that are one inch lower than stock, but because of the geometry and the angle of the suspension, one inch will lower the spike two inches, and in my opinion, that's way too low on the spike. If anything, it's better to raise one of these bikes and get a little more suspension than to lower them. But we want this bike to tuck down around the uh, tire and the fender a little more. Specifically, this guy individually wants the bike to look a certain way, and I will not lower this bike more than one inch as it is. So here we are, we're gonna install these work shocks. Okay, so let's go ahead and install the shocks. Now, I have all the Loctite cleaned off of these four bolts to hold these two shocks on. Notice this bolt is shorter. This bolt just happens to be the top right bolt for the right side of the frame. It'll be pretty obvious when you're doing the install, but just a little tip for you to see. 
All right, so threading this bolt through, obviously we need washers. Bushing goes on top. Bushing goes between the shock and the frame. Okay, I'm not, I don't have any Loctite on it right now. I'm just doing a dry fit to check and make sure everything fits properly. This bushing goes on the outside washer, long bolt, feed it through. All right, so right now, the way the bike is sitting, I'm going to have to jack it up so I can thread through the hole. Okay, now that we have the bike adjusted height-wise correctly and that the bolts line up from the frame to the swing arm, we're now going to lock tight everything and bolt everything together. Don't use too much, just enough to coat the threads. Loctite also acts like a lubricant, obviously. All right. Okay, here we have the OEM uh, rear fender for the muscle, and we're gonna remove the stock tail light system out and reinstall it into the Cafe Racer composite fender. We have now removed the metric screws from the OEM fender tail light section. We are not using these screws. Put these screws right back into the fender and put your fender wherever you are gonna put it. Okay, now it's time to install the OEM tail light system into the BSC Cafe Racer um, composite rear fender. These screws are supplied with our fender kit. The threads are different. They look very similar to what came out of your OEM, but they're not. They're 1032 um, threads, and I want you to use these specific screws that are supplied. Okay, so here's a mix of hardware. Here's the OEM hardware, and here's the Pitch and Seat Company hardware right here. We're going to discontinue these two washers and these two hex head bolts. We're going to use these socket heads. And we're going to add our stainless steel counterboard washers with these metric flatheads. And we're going to also use these rubber um, insulator washers. Anytime you mount a fiberglass fender to a bike, it should always be rubber mounted. The vibration can come through and dam damage and crack the actual fiberglass or composite fenders. Okay, now that we've got the install completed and the bike is ready for a test run, I want to go through a few things of um, what has been done here. As you can tell, the fender kit is on. This kit with the seating is going to get you three up to four inches further back in the saddle. The um, shocks that we went and installed, we got these works shocks. We built a custom set of shocks that allowed us to lower the bike and also raise it. These are adjustable height shocks with adjustable preload from works performance. Um, also, notice we have the install of the passenger pegs. These pegs are pretty good, um, you know, good setup so that if you run a two into one exhaust, you'll have room for that. It also sets the passenger uh, foot height up a little bit. Since we're moving the rider back, it's kind of a domino effect that's going to allow a different riding position for the passenger if you do the other seat system that we make and not this cafe solo rider kit. Um, also, here's the forward controls that also come from Altered State, which makes the passenger peg kit as well. Um, these foot controls are about four inches further forward in position. So overall, we can get a rider uh, seven to eight inches of room for a taller individual. And that's kind of the beauty between the Cafe Racer kit and the forward controls. Um, next thing that we are looking at doing in the near future is the handlebars. Um, you're kind of in a reach over position. Let me simulate that. Of course, I'm five foot six and can't simulate this bike like the six foot five guy that actually owns it. But he's pretty tall, obviously, and he's reaching down into the bars. So we are going to make a bar kit for this bike as well that's going to be up and back a little bit into a more comfortable position. 
And I think that's about it. Okay, here we have a close-up on the Altered State's 4-inch forward controls. Take a look at how clean and sleek this design is and how it articulates forward to give you taller riders a little bit more leg room. Here's the passenger peg kit that mounts right to the frame and relocates so that you can have a little bit more room as well for the passenger when you're running the two up seat systems. And at the rear, we have the works performance shocks. You could tell that we have the adjustable uh, rear lower hinds that allows us to bring the height up and down a little bit within range. And then up above, we have the preload settings so that you could tune it to your weight and uh, likes for the road. Now over here, we have the seat. This seat is a low profile seat that we have in smooth Italian leather. It has a nitro gel pad in it as well. It's a pretty sleek design. And then flowing back into the Cafe Racer Fender, which is painted to match, we offer paint. So any of your bike color combos that you have, um, we can match paint it for you and send it to you. Um, as we creep around to the back here, notice the taillight assembly. It's the OEM taillight for the muscle that bolts right into our, our fender configuration. And if you hadn't noticed, the Metzler tire on the rear of this bike, it's a 260. So the bike comes stock with a 240, and we wanted to go with the widest tire possible for the stock rim on the back. And it fills out the fender a little more, makes it a little tighter back here, closing out gaps. So as you can see, stage one is finally completed and the customer is um, going to bring the bike back to us in the winter time to do a phase two. And phase two is going to consist of a new set of wheels. We're going to put an 18, eight and a half rear on it um, to fill out the back of the wheel a little more with that 260 tire. And one of the really cool things that we're going to do on the front is we're going to go to a 21 inch wide wheel and do a, a little more of a wrap around front fender and we'll of course paint it to match. Uh, the bike. Um, that also in, is going to consist of doing a set of handlebars that are going to be a little better reach for this taller guy and that'll be his round two in the winter months. So check in with us on a future video, you know, follow along, see what you think of the build and we'll talk to you later.